I've always been a fan of calculators in general, and not too long ago I picked up this TI-83 Plus, and I thought it would be interesting to do another video on writing a program for it. And that's what we have here today, so I hope you enjoy it. I've put out one other TI-83 Plus video on my brother's channel, which is where I plan to post my non-retro gaming related content where he has a playlist set up specifically for my calculator videos. In that video, I coded the 10 print program. I'll try to go slow enough and show what I've learned since the last video I made. The first thing I wanted to go into is in the programs. I have a program called Glenn, and we're gonna go edit it. And then you'll see when you look at it that it's the hangman drawing and I, I what I did was I used a O for the head I used pluses and dashes for the lines I used exclamation points for the vertical line because I couldn't find a substitute for that and then I used the backslashes and forward slashes and I just did a plus and a asterisk for the body and so this is sort of a include program. What I'm gonna do is use that and include it into another program or insert it into another program so I don't have to retype out all those characters every time. So well, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're gonna go in back into the program. I have one called hang one, which is just a sub name I, I came up with. And what I thought I would do is just draw out the top two lines and then I would pass a variable into this. And I was thinking with guesses, like if you're on guess zero, it prints a blank hangman board. And if it's a guess one, then you'll show the head and that sort of thing. So, but what I wanted to do was we'll start with that if statement. So we're gonna go into program. Oops, I was there. If, if, and I was gonna use G. So I was gonna go alpha, G, and then we're gonna go test, so I'm gonna go second math. And in this example, I was thinking if G equals, we'll do equals zero, then we'll do a blank board. Now I did learn something here. If, if you wanna do a then on the same line, rather than putting it on two lines, you need to put a colon right there. And to do the colon, you go in and you go into second catalog and then arrow up from there to the colon. Now we can say if G is zero then, so we go in here to then program, then enter. What I wanted it to do was display the hangman from that other program, Glenn. What you do is you want to do this recall, RCL, so you do second recall, then you go program, arrow over to exec, pick the program you wanna insert from and hit enter and then enter again. So that inserts, that inserts it into your current program. It's a nice little tip. So we would go alpha space, alpha space and just kind of blank these out. And then what I thought I would do is in the program, as you're guessing the letter or the word, you would just increment that variable G by one at each time, and then you display a different, something different. So to end the if statement, you go in here and program, and then end. So now that ends your if statement. So if G is zero, then print the board. Oh, and then since I already printed the first two lines, we can take those two lines out. So we can go clear, clear, and delete those spaces. And then we go back out. Now you wanna run the program. Well, let's look at the, we need a program to call that program and I've already written something for that called Hangman. This is gonna be the main program and just started on it. So I'm gonna stuff right here, it says two, but let's put a zero in the value G, in the variable G, call program hangman one, 
And then when it's done, I just said display something. I had 55. So we'll go back out and we'll execute that program. And that was quick, but it displays a uh, hangman in general. I will speed through the rest. There's only four or five more. So I'm gonna do the rest off camera. I said I would do the rest of these, but I did all but one. Just wanna show, see how the first, the first two lines always displays the, the top part of the hangman, the first two lines. And then zero means we're just drawing hangman by itself the structure by itself. One means we're gonna display the head of the structure plus the head. Two means we're gonna do the head plus the body. Three, I decided to do the arm, the right arm. And then, cause it's, it's our game, we can do what we want. Four, do the left arm. Five, do the left leg. And then let's go ahead and do six together. We'll go if G, and the reason why I put, picked G was it stands for guess. So if your guess is the sixth guess, and this is the last one, equal six. Let's make sure it's six, because the last one was five. So this one's six. We want to put it then, you can append on the same line by using the colon. So if you do second catalog and up, arrow to colon and then go program then so that's how you combine if then on the same line now we're going to recall a copy that displays all the hangman so we go function recall program exec go down to glenn as we'll have the program and then enter and that inserts it, appends it to our program. We don't need the first two lines in there. So I'm gonna do clear, delete, clear, delete. And yeah, now we have left and right leg, but now we have to end it. So go down, program, end. So now we should be able to call this program with the variable g equals one, one, two, three, four, five, or six, or zero through six. So let's go quit, go into our main program, which is hangman, edit, and let's just set a value. Let's set six in there, and let's see if it will display six, and I'll get rid of this one. And Quit, we'll exec out program, hangman, run it. There it is. Now you see it's jumping down two lines, we'll have to look at that. The next part of this is to take input from the keyboard for the guesses. So I'll have to put in a variable. I was thinking, uh, I was looking into the capabilities of the TI-83, it doesn't look like there's an array feature built in. So I'm just going to use, I'm just going to set a variable to one word that can only be the max width of the screen. And then that way we'll work off one word at a time. It's not going to be a robust hangman. And then we'll have to, you get up to six guesses to guess the game. All right, one of the things I noticed I glossed over in the last segment was having one program call another program. And I wanted to go into that. We're gonna go into program and I'm gonna do a new program since I've already filled out the one I was working on earlier. It's already filled out completely. So I'm gonna go new, create new, and we'll just call this, I'm gonna go alpha. It's already alpha. Let's go A, 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 just for example. And what I want to do is take one and store it, hitting the store button, into variable g, alpha, g. And then I wanted to have this program call another program, which is to display the value when g is equal to one. And so we want to call, in this example, hang one. So let's go program, 
over to exec and come down to hang one and hit enter. So that was how I inserted that little line that I didn't really show in the last program. Now let's execute AAA here. Program, now it's alphabetical at the top, execute it, enter. And so it, it displays and now it fits all on one screen. Let's go back into it real quick just for an example and edit it and change G to a six. And that would be like the game over, mode quit, program, AAA. That's how you have one program call another. And you'll notice that when, even on the TI-83 here, that the variable is store, it, it's global. It's not, it doesn't have local scope. So if we go into programs here, I have the variable uh, G, let's edit that. And I've set G equal to six. And then if you go back into programs and we, we were to go over to hang one, it's looking for variable G. So we're having the same variable in both programs. If it wasn't in global scope, it would make a lot, it would make uh, life a little more difficult. But thankfully that does seem to work and it's a nice little feature of the TI-83+. Plus. All right, in this segment, I wanted to show you how to go about deleting a program once you no longer need it on your list of programs. And so in order to do that, what you do is you hit second and memory, and then arrow down one to memory management slash delete. You notice that? Then you arrow down to number seven, because what we're trying to delete is a program, and hit enter. And then from here, you can tag programs by hitting enter on each one you want to delete, or, or enter again to, uh, to remove the tag marks. And you'll notice in here, you'll see all your RAM free, and you'll, you'll notice how much each pro, how big each program, how much memory each program takes. So I only have an asterisk next to the AAA. When you're ready to delete it, you just hit the delete button, and it asks you, are you sure? So you have to arrow down to yes, and you, and you select it, and then it's gone. So that is how you delete a program on the TI-83. Plus, if you go into the programs and you look at it now, either to execute or to edit, it's no longer on the list. All right, in this segment, I wanted to talk about the catalog. What the catalog is on the TI-83 Plus is an alphabetical list of all functions and instructions on the calculator. You can access each catalog item from the menus or the keyboard. So basically, let's go in, I'm gonna show you, the reason why I'm bringing this up is in the next video, I'm gonna be talking a lot about string functions, and those are only accessible by going into the catalog, and you go second and zero to get to catalog. From here, I touched on it briefly in today's video. If you arrow up, you can get to the special characters that you can't see or you can't easily necessarily get to. And one of those is the colon, which we were using for the if-then statements. You have pi, you have the question mark, stuff like that. And then if you arrow through, You'll see there's, there's a lot of functions in here, and this is an alphabetical list. And we're gonna be using functions like this one right here, sub, and we're gonna be using in string and length. Those are the three main ones, and you just have to kind of arrow over to them. Unfortunately, you can't just type in sub and put a paren. You have to actually use it from this list here. You can't just go in, for example, and type in if. It has to be a command from the catalog. Some of those are subcategorized within this, within when you hit program. These are, these are commands that you'll also see in the catalog. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about the catalog and it's a big alphabetical listing and it contains all of the characters and it doesn't have all characters, but it has a lot of the special characters. 
and all of the commands that you need uh, for programming the TI-83+. Stay tuned to part two of this video where we'll take a look at the completed Hangman game, back up and transfer your basic programs to your computer, and dissect the program code. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe.